Can you see my GTT right there? Mm. Let's see if we are live. I think we are. I don't know who's joined in yet, so. Mom my mama, Kathleen. Is that door still open? Yeah. Hey, we got a lot of folks. Charlie, I need to talk to you tomorrow about those texts and everything that you're asking me. I, for, I forgot to respond to you. Everybody's already liking. We're getting started on time tonight. Brittany Renee had to help me with um, getting the video ready. I'm not very, I'm not very good at this. So basically, I'm one stop shop. You are, but you get so mad so easy. You got a old temper. Got you got a. You were throwing your phone. I was throwing my phone. I was. I was throwing a temper tantrum. <laughs> I was. Hey, I hope the storms aren't scaring everybody off tonight. I know people are uh, also probably on spring break. I'll see you in the breakfast tomorrow, Charlie. Can't wait to see you, my man. Kim Neese. When are you coming to hang out with us, Kimberly Neese? Hmm? Who wants one of these GTT mugs? Full of water. Belinda Erinder, we can't do it without you, friend. The best. We were having to, we were telling somebody today how great you are. We tell somebody every day how great you are. We did get the Wi-Fi working. Thanks. Hey, Richard Nace, I hope all is going well. Richard Nace, even though you're in Alabama, you could probably still use Belinda. Belinda Erinder. All right, it's on watching Shameless Slow to see. Hey, Jeff Shot. Thank you, buddy. Everybody, uh, Joe G. Holt, when you come to do the, uh, the, the our shrubbery, our garden, Brad Elam. Um, hey, buddy. Shane Ray, man, I forgot to respond to your text the other day as well. I apologize. But the next time you want to come on set, we'll talk the big kahuna and talk about why people need to use you. Richard, come up here and talk to Belinda. Belinda, can you do loans down in Alabama? Richard Neese has been in the business a short time, but he's turning heads down there in northern Alabama. Well, everybody, tomorrow possibly, I hope the, the rain and the um, wind does not blow everything away. Everybody, uh, if you're new to this, every Thursday night, my man Aaron Dabney, look, buddy, I mixed it up. If you want to mix your hair up, go to Woods Viking. See my guy Aaron Dabney up there. Because we mix it up, don't we? Uh, every Thursday night, the purpose of this show, straight from the gut, this is very unscripted. It's unrehearsed. And it's really, I'm 43 years old. I'm a real estate agent in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And I want to reflect back on my life and talk about what I wish I would have, what I wish I would have done at 30 years old. If I could go back and say, Tommy, you need to do this. And don't get me wrong, people tried to tell me. They, there was a lot of people in my life that were telling me what I need to do. I just didn't. There's an old saying: the teacher will appear when the student is, is ready, and I just wasn't ready. So what I'm trying to do is. Uh, what I'm trying to do is impact people that maybe they're struggling, maybe maybe they were immature like me, maybe they're slow learners like I was for most of my life. I, I didn't catch on to self-improvement until a very, very, very late time, fresh and clean. Hey, I need it. Chris Gregory, man, I appreciate you watching this. I appreciate your comments, by the way. Um, Nancy? I think your boy Adam will be back tomorrow. Hey, Mama. My mama's on here. Well, uh, everybody, uh, what I'm looking for is likes, comments. Doug, I did send somebody named Jackson Jordan to see you today. I hope he came by to see you. He's one of Kawasaki, man. But um, I want to get likes. If you like it, please like it. If you share it, we go back on the following day. And whoever shared it, we'll pick one winner, and we'll give you a gift card for the Alley on Main. So the Alley on Main is my favorite place. So if you share it, you get a chance to you get a chance to win twenty five dollar gift card. And I also have to say, I've got one Brittany Renee 
in the studio with us. So um, she may point out and ask us, or she may uh, have some feedback or some, some things. So what I want to talk about is one of my best friends, his name's Tony Woodall. And Tony uh, Woodall, Belinda, maybe you should share this. Uh, Tony Woodall was a minister for most, he's uh, 106 years old, I think. He's really old, but he doesn't look old, but he's very wise. And he he's very good at helping me see things more clear. And uh, because of his time, my, my hot girlfriend is here. Let's, let's show her off. Thank you. There she is, right there, kid. Brittany Renee is actually right here in the studio. So uh, Tony is very good at helping me see things more clear. It's hard sometimes to see things whenever um, that, that scene, you can't see the picture when you're stuck inside the frame. So it's very hard. It's extremely hard unless you've got somebody like I've got. I've got a lot of friends, but Tony Woodall is very good at helping me understand things. He's very good. He's also got a great understanding of understanding of where I started because we had so many conversations. So I'm talking about internal happiness tonight. And at 40, when are you scheduling? Hey Kira, I did send uh, Jackson Jordan to Sloan's today to see Doug to Mumbrium. I am doing my part. So I am sending people up there just so you know. So we're talking internal happiness. And what does in, internal happiness mean to you? What does happiness mean, period, to people? It means something different to each person. Well, it does mean something different to, to people. But what I have found over my long life of 43 years is really true happiness is internal. It starts internally. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hey, Eric Hensley, how you doing, my man? So... Tony was very good at articulating. I don't have my glasses. I can't see very good. So you might have to tell me. I don't want my glasses on. Though. I look like a nerd. So the way Tony, the first time we talked, he, he referred to happiness and internal. She said she was referring to sales team. Coaching. I do need to get that on the books. But we were talking about uh, internal happiness. And he was showing it. Show me a tree. And it was, uh, during a, it was a time of year where the tree did not have leaves. It was very bare. And he said, see that tree right there? Right now, it looks dead, but it's very much alive. You just can't see what's going on inside of it right now because it's growing from the inside out. Now, once spring comes around, you will see proof that it's alive. So sometimes if you're going through a transformation like what I did, where there's a lot of things happening in my life. A lot of people couldn't see it for a while. They couldn't see the effort that I was putting into my... It was a brewing. It was brewing. It was, uh, it was manifesting, but it took a long time for people to see it. And a lot of times people, uh, they, they, didn't, um, they didn't believe it, even when they saw it. So real change, it happens on the inside, not the outside. So um, for me... What did I, I got some notes right here, believe it or not. Do I have any more questions, right? Well, I just want to see what my notes were. But, <laughs> but forever during this time period, this started when I was about 35 or 36 years old, whenever I started to truly want to know what happiness meant. Because for me, at that time, everything about happiness was on the outside. Mm -hmm. It was It was about a car. It was about... It was about uh, where I lived. It was about who my friends were. It may have been about women. It was all these things outside of me that were what I was looking for to make me feel better. If you're on here, Marinate Nate, no, 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 good time. Tommy took time. That's right, Aaron Dabney. Just like that haircut you gave me. It did take time. And you do have to be patient. But Aaron, what I was really struggling with during this time was I was looking for a microwave. And I felt like for me to become happy, I had to immediately go out and find something right now that's going to make me feel better. And I had a lot of friends. That's the way they would feel better about themselves. There's people that we know that uh, they are constantly, me and Brittany talk about this. We're talking about things where we see people, they're trying to add something into their life, correct? Mm -hmm. Instead of feeding what's already inside their life. And 
And I was one of those people, and maybe a lot of the people on here, maybe maybe you didn't ever have that struggle, but growing up the way I grew up, always wanting other things. And when I say grew up, I'm, I'm really referencing everything back between birth and 35, 36 years old, because it took me to 36 years old before I started actually growing up. So my focus was wrong. My focus was externally. You'll never be happy. You will never, ever be happy if everything is focused on the outside. Feeding the inside is rewarding. It is rewarding. But I believe that's the only way it's going to work. I, I don't believe there's another way. Hmm, I need to take that advice and I'm older. Brad, it took me forever, man. Hey, it's never too late. Hey, Jason Leonard on the road, just giving you a shout. Where are you going this time? You going to Florida, Jason Leonard? Jason Leonard is a Murfreesboro boy that's uh, hashtag built by superior or hashtag superior. He has taken over Nashville, our very own. Got uh, kind of moving fast here. Sorry, I'm trying to read this. People will always question your image. In your life, and you know, I'm gonna get to that in a bit, Jeff. I appreciate you saying that. Head to the gym, my man. Good luck in there, buddy. So, um, the real gold is on the inside. Think about this the real gold is on the inside. Too often, people go to the mall and they're getting the fake gold that don't last. When I say the mall, that's any reference to going outside of their body it's something material materialistic whether it's moment satisfaction. that's right it's instant gratification that will never make Crushing, you happy everlasting it can debbie castile how are you doing friend if uh if you're focused externally you uh you're just you're never going to be happy and you're never really growing so that was something My mama's got, hey, my mama always gets in here and starts talking about stuff. So, one of the ways that I started becoming happier was I stopped focusing on the good opinion of others. What that meant is I didn't need to hear good things being said about me from other people. It's really, this is something I think everybody should take and, and live by. When other people are talking about you, it's really none of your business. If your friends are talking about you, it's really none of your business. If somebody that you know is talking about it's not any of your business. And let me tell you why, because it becomes a huge distraction. It builds huge uh, insecurities if you're worried about what people are saying. Now, I know people talk about me. I know they're gonna have something to say, but I don't care. And here's something else that's very, very important. And it's taken me a long time to realize this. Even when people are talking about you, they don't care. It's very, very brief. They'll say things. If you think somebody's talking about you, it's almost like you're being very selfish to think they're actually thinking that much about you. Think about this. We have people all the time that we're saying something about. Let them talk. Scott Abernathy, I didn't know you were on here, buddy. I appreciate you being on here. But to, for forever, the way I felt about myself really derived from what other people were saying about me. Again, Listen, I was focusing on something external, which was the other people, what they were saying about me. But now if they say something about me, it's none of my business. I don't care. I know this. There's always things I say about somebody that could be taken out of context that might get back to them and hurt their feelings. So the way I look at it is they're saying something about me, and I don't really dig into why they said it. I really don't care. I understand that they've got an opinion and that's the way they believe, but I don't take it personal. I always took it personal, Brittany Renee, when people were talking about me. You got anything to say over there or are you just thinking? I'm just thinking. You want more to add in a minute? Timely. Hey, go cats. That was a long ride to watch them go down, wasn't it? If they are talking about me, they are prospecting I'm getting that business. Well, th that that is right, Richard. But one thing my aunt said, there's only one thing worse than being talked about, and that was not being talked about. So if people are talking, whenever you're talking about somebody, when you have things, whenever somebody has something negative to say about me, it's really something they're saying about themselves. It ain't about me. Because I don't, I don't like to go around and... That's right, Kim Nace, I've already said that, but. Okay. 
we got to run. Hey, thank you, Kim Nice Rod Key. I'll be in there tomorrow, tomorrow as long as we're not doing anything too hard. So, number one, real change happens on the inside, not on the outside. Mark Gunner, my man, I think the only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. Truth, that's right. Nathan Sanders, Belinda was already on here. I'm glad you're on here, my man. So, number two, I've got three things I'm going to talk about. And then any questions, we're going to interject and we're going to, we're going to talk about it. So, I'm still the same person, but I have become aware that I'm not the person that I thought I was. That is very deep. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I being clear on what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm being clear. Well, but I only get it because we talked about this before. So maybe you should explain to the others if you haven't. Well, I'm going to, I mean, in talking about these things, you got to be very vulnerable and you got to be open with yourself. Mm -hmm. And you got to admit, you know, I thought during these times I was confident in myself, but anytime I'm focusing on the external, that, that means there is a void of internal confidence, in my opinion. Hey, Bill Jakes, glad you're on here, my man. So let's just say back, back in the day, because I didn't have a lot of success, in my opinion. Now, to other people, they may say I had plenty of success, but in my opinion, I was not living up to my potential. So therefore, looking at where I thought I should be versus where I actually was, that I, I was believing that I was not a winner. I didn't believe, I didn't believe, I wanted to accomplish certain things, but I didn't believe it. I did not know I can go out and do certain things because I did not have that proof. Mm -hmm. I did not have proof. I didn't, I couldn't visualize it because I'd never done it. And I'm not saying I didn't have any success. I'm just saying I did not, uh, I didn't have the kind of success that I should have had. Justin Holder, what's up, my man? I see you're by, you're doing a flip house. As long as they think. That's right, my man, Jeff Shot, my man. Uh, another problem that, that I had was uh, I had too much uh, self-doubt. Just didn't, I mean, it's really going back to that internal belief in me that I could do things, that I was smart enough, that I could figure things out. I didn't have this belief because I didn't see myself doing things. I didn't have the proof that I had done it before. If we got any questions, you fire them at. So the, the proof started coming whenever I started having these small victories. For me, it started whenever I got a coach. Michael came in and we started we started having these conversations and things slowly started changing. The one thing that started changing was uh, what I would say is my knowledge, my skills. But these are things that took a long time to... Uh, ben Dotson, man, I see you're down there at Destin or Panama City or somewhere. You're at Club La Vila tonight. <laughs> so, so things that started changing in me where I, I was paying a lot more attention to getting better. And the way I got better was through reading. It was getting around other people that made you think bigger. they made me think bigger. They challenged me. They were also doing things that I wanted to do. You know, one of my friends, Scott Nagy, he started a real estate company. And then I was around Michael Bird. I was around people that were performing at a higher level except me. The old guy here, I was just good time Tommy. I was the guy that uh, I had a lot of rich buddies that could go, we could go places and they would pay for everything. That was that was what I had. So number one, real life, real change happens internally. It will not happen externally. When it, when we're talking about happiness, it's all it's an inside job. Remember this: you you'll never be happy with things external. They're only gonna they're only gonna last a little while. It's cotton candy. Number two, I'm still the same person, but I've I've become aware that I'm not the person that I thought I was. I'm not the person that a lot of people thought I was. Like whenever I sold my buddy B.J. Henley house several years ago, I'm not in the same place that I was then because of how much time I put into reading. And today, everybody, B.J., my man, we got to get your house on the market, buddy. Got to do it. But uh, what really helped me was was uh, I, I became committed to getting better every day. You ain't got as much to say over there tonight. I like it when you're talking, but you, Renee, stop me. Well, no, I completely agree. And I feel like I've 
I've done this just in the past year, but we've talked about that. You well, know, hey, I'm going to say this. Brittany's 31 years old. She looks about 16, but Brittany is way ahead of where I was at 31 years old. She is much more mature, and she handles her life completely different than I did at 31 years old. So you might not relate as much to me because my my story is in being half ass so long and then it's switching. Usually, I mean, I've shown enough of a consistent pattern at 35 years old for most people to give up on me. Well, if I would have stayed on some of the paths that I was on, I would still be there, but. So, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is, but you're 31 and you're, you're definitely ahead of where I was. And there's a lot of people out there that I see that, hey, I wish I, would, I, wish I was doing what they were doing or what they're doing right now at their age. So I'm going to talk about three small victories that can get you headed in the right direction. Some people that are already in the right direction, this is going to be very elementary and you're not going to really, it's not going to mean very much to you. But let's talk about the people out there that, like me, they didn't ever actually have a proof in their mind that they could do something. So how do, how do you change that? It takes one small victory. One small victory, it'll break the cycle. Cotton candy. Oh, you over know there, cotton like candy. That. So, so three small victories can get you headed in the in the right direction. So, it just take. It only takes one thing, and I'm gonna make. I'm gonna give you pictures of things so you can use these as images. Absolutely, I'm getting better every day. I just have to realize I have to change my focus on certain areas of my life. Brad, that, okay, well, let's take you, Brad. Let's take, there's one thing. Uh, yes, David, I'm sorry I missed that, buddy. He said yeah. girls are always more mature. They, they, well, usually they are. So I'm agreeing, of course. I think most women are more mature. I, I agree with that. I think women, I think most women can figure things out easier than men. I also believe, what are you? Brad, what were you saying about Brad? Brad, I'm sorry, I get distracted. Let's take whatever you're focused on right now. If it's not, if it's trending in the wrong direction, let's just say you want to stop the the tailspin. You want to come out of that, and you want to get momentum going in a, a different direction. It only takes one little, one little win. Whatever you're focused on, let's stop. Let's stop the losing. So, for me, let's say I wanted to break my cycle. So, I'm going to give you something. But Clayton Whitaker, my man. Hey, this is a guy we need to get on here because...